All right, in this video, we're going to continue to talk about meiosis, but we're going to look at how meiosis is um, is a generator of genetic diversity and why sexual reproduction is um, is in, you know is superior in creating that kind of genetic diversity. So um, meiosis, again, it's a process that creates haploid gametes. Those haploid gametes are four genetically different cells as opposed to mitosis, which creates two genetically uh, identical cells. That process of meiosis has two divisions. We start with one diploid cell that duplicates, and then you end up with four haploid cells that, again, are genetically diverse from one another. So where does that genetic diversity take place? It takes place with three main ideas. The first is during prophase one. So I'm going to go back here. So during prophase one, if you remember, we had homologous pairs that were lined up. And those homologous pairs will actually line up to form structures called tetrads. The reason they're called tetrads is because there's four pieces, right? Four sister chromatomes, chromosomes. I'll go back to this page. This is the one that dad donated, and it has been duplicated. This is the one that mom donated, and it has been duplicated. These pairs are homologous to one another, and so all the genes are identical on each one. There may be different versions of those genes, but they are the same genes. And so as they line up, these chromosomes are attracted to one another. And so what happens is sections of those chromosomes can actually swap. Now, it's not bad if they swap because this section of genes and this section of genes are identical to one another. They have the same genes. They may have different versions of that, whereas this section codes for hair color, but this is brown hair and this is blonde hair, and now all of a sudden it's swapped. And so this can create diversity. I mean, you think of, a, um, think of this chromosome crossing over could happen multiple places on this chromosome right? Um, and then you have 23 pairs in a human cell, and how many times is that happening? And so that can create a lot of diversity. Now, this only occurs during prophase one of meiosis one, because this is the only time that homologous pairs are going to be together. Because if you remember, homologous pairs separate in anaphase one, and so they'll no longer have a chance to cross over. Um, <clears throat> And so the result, and you, you see this language here that you'll probably see on the AP exam, is recombinant chromatids. Recombinant is just recombination. They've um, and the and so this is these are recombinant chromatids because they have been changed through that combination. And these are non-recombinant chromatids because well they didn't they didn't combine. And so again, this creates a great genetic diversity. Another example of where diversity can take place is during anaphase one. And so this particular cell, it shows you two homologous pairs, right? And so we have two homologous pairs, Moses, uh, there's prophase one, they're going to line, um, homologous pairs are going to line up together. This is, doesn't show, actually it does show example of crossing over because you can kind of, maybe that's not, that's just showing those genes, but whatever. This doesn't show crossing over occurring, but it is important because these, um, homologous pairs are going to separate in anaphase one, right? One half is going to go to the one side and the other half is going to go to the other side. And so in this particular instance over here, all the blues went left, all the reds went right. Well, there's nothing that says that big blue and little blue have to stick together, right? In this particular case, they did. But notice over here, they made a different choice. Big blue went with little red and big red went with little blue. And so you have some different combinations here. This is called the law of independent assortment in which each chromosome pair independently assorts itself or assorts itself independently of the other pairs. Um, so this is just two pairs. Imagine 23 pairs. How many different combinations can you get? It's a lot. All right, I think it's two to the 23rd power. I think that's how you figure that. Um, so it's, it's quite a bit of of combinations there, um, essentially endless combinations, especially if you combine that with uh, crossing over. It's um, it's quite a few combinations. And so um, there's there's a lot of genetic diversity that is created just from these two, these two things. Now, 
if you want to multiply that astronomically larger, then you start to deal with the genetic diversity that comes from fertilization. And so the female creates an egg, and that egg is the product of meiosis. It's a little bit different than sperm creation, but we'll just assume that let's say that there's one egg, that one egg is one of four genetically different haploid cells that has been created. And there's crossing over, there was independent assortment that occurred. And so this egg is genetically unique. There are sperm cells that are created and they're created in the same way. And they're each one genetically unique. In fact, there's the next time meiosis occurs, there's probably not going to create another one like it. And so the chance of this particular egg and this particular sperm cell coming together to make this particular zygote is astronomically small, but yet it happens. And so that genetic diversity there is going to be a lot. I mean, you can just look at siblings, right? Take a, take a family that has four kids. Uh, they look like mom and dad, but they don't look like, but they look different than mom and dad and they look like one another, but they look a lot different than one another. All right. And so the, you have some similarities. You can tell that there's definitely a relation, but you can tell that there's a lot of genetic diversity there. And that diversity out in the wild, not so much in our own uh, population, but out in the wild, it's going to create adaptation. Adaptation leads to fitness and fitness is going to lead to more survival. And so this, this will lend itself toward the general fitness of an organism. And this is why sexual reproduction is the dominant form of reproduction found in all life forms. <clears throat> so this just shows you that, um, you know, if you want to make a bunch of sperm and a bunch of egg, and so you can just any one of these, and it just shows you all the different kinds of combinations. And this also shows you the crossing over that can have an effect on that. And so again, the amount of genetic diversity created by sexual reproduction is great. And that is why it is generally favored over asexual reproduction.